most difficult. He had known the singer Anton Raff for many years. Raff is the best and most faithful person in the world, and one must show him respect because of his grey hair. But it frustrates me that he is so set in his old routines, despite his enthusiasm for one of the arias I have written for his voice. I wake up in the morning and I'm singing it, and I go to my bed at night, and I am still singing your song. <laughs> well, you're most welcome, Hera. It makes him easy to compose for, if you are happy to be conventional and let him rattle on for hours. But I have no desire to bore the audience. The old man is too fond of singing his chopped noodle. We need to feel your pain, your, your desperation. In this aria, you're railing against fate. And for that to happen, it must come from within. If it comes from within, then the audience will believe it. And for your, your actions, your actions should be a natural extension of the music. Are you with me? Yes, of course. Good. From the beginning again. His voice is still a lovely thing to hear. But he pays no attention to expression and now finds it increasingly difficult to reach some of the notes. Raff's Fort del Mar is a typical bravura aria, traditionally designed to show off a singer's virtuosity, hence these elaborately decorated vocal lines. Mozart's determination was to put all his music right at the center of the action, driving the plot inexorably forward. Because of the old man's limitations, he chipped away at the text so that the singer's limitations became both disguised and made glorious. If I could change one note of this quartet, believe me, I would do so. Sing it through with the others and you'll see that I'm right. Mozart wanted to hold his audience's attention every step of the way, so any changes he made to Varesco's libretto avoided an unnecessary diversion or some useless piece of action. The notes and the music must propel the drama at all times. Now, no one had ever behaved before in this fashion in the rather sedate world of opera Syria. He wanted scenes to dissolve into each other. So, take the end of Fuad El Mar, for instance. You get... Now that ought to be the end, but it isn't. There's Electra, we're into the next scene. 
Mozart even said in his own words that at the end of the act there should be the greatest possible noise for the shortest possible time so the audience have no time to cool down before they have to applaud. And his first audience, who invited himself to the last rehearsal, was none other than his patron, the Elector of Bavaria. The last rehearsal was magnificent, and all the music is as it should be, threatening a storm. You can hear the sea, and everybody is now pleased. When we had finished, the Elector shouted, Bravo! This opera is charming. No music has ever had such an effect on me. It will bring you great honour. Then he said, Who would think such great thoughts came from so small a head? Who indeed would think that such great thoughts came from so small a head? A compliment of sorts, but still no court position. He left us all to go to Vienna. It was here in Vienna the busy and vivid city which was the political, cultural and economic capital of the Austrian Empire that Mozart settled for what was to prove to be the last decade of his life. With its vast, knowledgeable audience and five thriving theatres, the city will nurture his sense of drama and so enable him to transform the operatic conventions of his day. The final 25 years of the 18th century were a time of political change across Europe. The old aristocracy were in decline and the middle class were growing more prosperous, more numerous and developing their own political ideas. And Mozart's decision to base himself in Vienna put him right at the centre of this. His new hope was the patronage of Holy Roman Emperor Joseph II of Austria, an absolute monarch with a passion for music and an agenda for social reform. It is the will of His Majesty, Joseph II, Emperor of Austria, that the practice of torture to extract confession be abolished. Further, continue and that the death penalty be replaced by the sentence of lifelong hard labour. Deterrence being the key. And further, that the royal hunting grounds be opened to the Viennese public as a park for their recreation and pleasure. A place of leisure for all men, from one who esteems them. So, a royal hunting park became a people's paradise. Joseph, ever aware of the danger of revolution, was keen to encourage the German middle class whilst restricting the privileges of his Italian nobility. And in the process, theatre became something of a political football. In an age before TV and cinema, theatre was more than just entertainment. It was a forum for up-to-date thinking, new ideas, moral comment. So, whilst the aristocracy were flocking to the gorgeous, rarefied and witty world of Italian opera, a new German audience were eagerly awaiting their own operas, their own popular culture. Soon after Mozart had set up residence in Vienna, our unforgettable emperor, Joseph II, formed the plan, so worthy of the Austrian emperor, of alienating taste from Italian operas by supporting the German language Singspiel. Thus would he encourage a more patriotic outlook. Accordingly, he assembled Vienna's best singers and commissioned a German opera from that upcoming talent, Mozart. And Mozart was just the man for the job. My fervent desire is to help forward the German language theory.